Hey guys, this is Strider Prime bringing you a new edition of Tool Time with Strider Prime. It's been a while since I did a video like this, and I thought that it would be appropriate to show off my latest acquisition or latest tool. And that is the Kaizo Waterfall Spray Booth. Mouthful, isn't it? However, this is my newest spray booth that I have been looking to get for quite a long time. I've had the Mr. Super Booth for, oh God, I would say over 10 years now. And it was, it was something that I ordered through um, Gundam Planet. And uh, they didn't sell it exclusively, but they ordered it for me. And... Uh, I've had it. I, I, I always wanted it. I had it, originally I had a Tamiya spray booth, but it was getting long in the tooth for that one. And I said, oh, let me get this one. This is a little bit more reduced profile. Um, but as years pass, and obviously visually it's not appealing to the eye, uh, I was now already in, in the process of considering to getting a new spray booth. And I've seen many people's uh, spray booths. Um, Dokudo, uh, Dokudo, who I frequently go to her house every now and then, has a nice spray booth, and I was actually considering getting that. But I recently saw because uh, I've been dealing with Robot Kai for quite some time, and that's who the sponsor is, Robot Kai. Thank you. They had this in their uh, stock. Now. I immediately I asked them if I could order it, and I said sure. And, and when I, but unfortunately, when I asked them, um, things were going on that I couldn't control myself, and unfortunately, I missed out on the order. So I had to put myself on a waiting list, and waited a good six months. Now, obviously, there are a lot of people who already jumped on the bandwagon, did their own reviews and things like that. So I'm kind of a little late for the party. Regardless of the case, I got it. I got it right here, and boy, is this a heavy motherfucker. It's huge. I guess I didn't actually anticipate that. When I got the case, it felt like I was getting a new computer. Again, it's heavy. We're talking about over 20 pounds, you could say. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's something. Uh, Robakai also gave me some nice little gifts. They gave me these uh, little mixing bottles. You know, these are good for, um, I think I'll prepare them for primer, and things like that. I got two. Uh, uh, and this is from the same company. And I got these nice little tweezers. Also. Check that out. Very nice. Thank you very much. But clearly we are here to see this guy. And, uh... I had to say goodbye to my air spray booth, but I'll keep that as a backup. You never know. And uh, maybe if I have a bigger room, <laughs> bigger than this, <laughs> maybe a garage or a basement uh, near future, I'll use that as another um, device for you know taking you know doing what I have to do. But we're, we're this is very very interesting because now I realize that the so, getting this did not come with a, um, a venting tube, unlike this one right here that was from the original, um, sorry, uh, from the original Super Booth. And if I put it on this, let's see, yeah, it's kind of big, the hole is kind of big. I did or, uh, get something. I did get something, so let me just take this off. I'll take this off in a minute because this thing, there's a lot of dirt on this. Um, but let me prepare this so we can see it, how it looks in action. Okay, there it is. It's now all preset and ready to go. Now, um, I had to <clears throat> read the instructions a couple of times and realize the instructions was not that very intuitive. How it was explained is, uh, 
a little weird. Fortunately, even though this is a, there's a lot of information that's not so straightforward, I said there had to be a, an online version of this where somebody broke it down and explained it to me. So I'm going to give credit to the person who did an excellent video on uh, des describing the the, um, the uh, Kaizu uh, Kaizo waterfall, and that is A O Mecca. A O Mecca, you did a great presentation on this. I'm giving you credit for that, and I'll place a link on this video so people can click on it. And you can, and for those who want to watch this video, please click on that. Basically, he explained how to open it up because there are the two latches on the side, and you flip it over, or flip it up, to remove the the casing in the bottom. The casing in the bottom has various uh, sections, and if you can see here, let me see if I can zoom in, this part there, that's a, a water pump. In there, when I pulled it out, there's a, there's a, you know, a little section there where the the device is in there and then I poured water in there. According to this, you had to pour at least, uh, let's see here, 1.2 liters of water. If you have one of those uh, measuring cups, something like this, if you fill it up, up to the top and fill it in and maybe fill a little bit up to there, that should be fine. And then all you need to do is put it back in there. Um, how the whole device, how the whole system works, and I'm going to turn that on in a few moments, is um, water is picked up from there, come on top, and then it's, it goes down here. There's a glass piece here that you could see. So it, come, it rains down. It falls on this little section here where it funnels the water into the container, and then the water goes down here. And then <clears throat> it comes out and about, and then catches here again, so it can be repicked up and then refunnel back again. Simple. Oh, by the way, if you get this, make sure you remove the uh, sil silica gel from there. Don't put it in there. Now, um, everything's all. I had to remove the plastic. Um, surprisingly, let me see here. This is a, this is not clear, even though his video shows that this plastic part is clear. He must have gotten the first generation kit. Uh, kit. Mine is this one, which is no big deal. Um, I'm not going to keep it down all the time. However, this will be probably a good idea to keep it like that. If maybe uh, the airflow or the how when you spray paint uh, the paint on your parts, you don't want the paint to, to backblast to you. Remember, this is more of a funnel type thing because when you spray when you spray paint parts, if there's like some sort of uh, funnel or some sort of uh, curvature, the paint will bounce back. Now, supposedly with the waterfall, that's not going to happen because it's to pick up the particles. But that depends on the situation. Um, there's some magnets here on the top, where it's designed to hold on the two um, the two screws here, so that way it holds it into place. And obviously, if you want to collapse the whole thing for storage, it's fine. All right, I'm going to test this out. Even though it's not plugged in, it, the air vent's not plugged in. I just want to test it out to see how the waterfall works. So I'm going to flip on. Oh, first thing, let me turn on. I almost forgot. So, even though I have this light camera here, this light source, I'm going to turn it off. Because it is a bit annoying. And even though I see, I got the reflection from outside. There are these, this LED uh, lamp. This is like a 10 watt lamp. Now, <clears throat> getting this is cool. Because I always wanted a stronger lamp source. Now, unfortunately, this is a USB connector. And surprisingly, even though this thing is powered by a standard, uh, uh, I would say, computer cable, 
there's no port for it. No port at all. I mean, there's no way you can actually plug it in. So, fortunately, I mean, yeah, unless you have a a uh, uh, what is it, an outlet where you can plug it in with the USB, then you can use this to plug it in. Or, I have this battery pack. I'm going to put it in here and turn it on. Look how strong that light is. That's really nice. You can decrease and then increase the light source to the best you want. Or, change different type of... Uh, lighting uh, effects, but I'm going to keep it there. That's the nice nice and bright one. Great. This is going to help me a lot with my painting. Let's turn this on. Power is on. Now I'm going to turn on the button here for the water. Wow. That is, uh, that's very neat. I'm going to look up a bit so you guys can see. Maybe I can lower down the, this. <clears throat> oh, man. This is really neat. situated so I can see this properly. Oops. Hold on a second here. So, as you can see, the water is flowing properly. very relaxing to see something like this. Normally you would probably have like, if I had a fish in there, it would be nice, but then of course the fish will die with all, with the, uh, with all the paint. So that's cool. I want to see how I'm going to have to figure out how to paint this and have the camera angled in a specific area. Right now I have the, I have my, um, my Manfredo, uh, stand holding up the camera, but it's in, in the way. I'll have the ability to, you know, hold on to the part and then spray it. We're going to do a test run. Um, AO Mecca did a test run using spray paint primer, which worked pretty well, but I don't like to use spray paints at all. Um, I've always had some issues with it. Um, maybe because the fact that, remember, you have to have some sort of flow, uh, airflow going through. Spray paints are very very difficult to paint inside a house unless you know how to control it that's why I prefer using an airbrush now I did not put on the front of the um, the vent on top but I'm going to do that in a moment and also I'm going to also turn on the fan because there are these two massive fans here let me turn it on this is like low speed I'm going to increase the speed up. Oh, yeah. This is like a turbo boost. <laughs> this is the highest you can go right now. Wow. I guess we can keep it down to a certain, like, a little decibel right like there, but I'll turn it off. And then turning it off by hitting the button. Is always required. Nice. That's actually really cool. All right. Let me um, prepare with the event, and we'll do a test run with some painting. So before I begin uh, priming, I want to utilize the new uh, bottles that you know uh, Robot Kai sent me. This is of course the Kaizo, uh, you know, bottle. And I'm going to utilize it as where I'm going to put my primer. And I'm going to use another product that I got from them. This is MK Servicer um, Gray by Moto. 
I'm going to fill it up. Let's see how far I can get up with that. This is very, very thick. So, oh my god, I think I may have made a mistake, but that's fine. Let's get up to 20 milliliters. This is very, very thick. I was going to use the Mr. Surfacer product, but I said, no, let me keep this within the fa within the Robot Kai family. <clears throat> also, the fact that this, this is very, very, very smelly. So. Let me just get something to clean that up a bit. But the one, the last thing I want is this thing to be stuck. Wow. Uh, obviously, you don't want to pour thinner on this because you'll damage this, but. I want to at least have enough uh, space, you know, I want to clip this up so that way it's easy for me to... But I was not, not bad, just maybe the nozzle should have been a little wider. Okay, I think that's it. Yeah, alright. Now, take D01 thinner for airbrushing, but when you use it. Uh, you know, I need the other one. Because there's a hole here. All we can do... Let me see. Maybe I should do it this way. No, I'm going to make a mess. But, um, where is... Oh, there it is. I'm going to have to get another one of this. So we did 20 milliliters, let's do up to 50. That should be one and a quarter, one and a half times, I guess, if we can. I know I think many people say do double. I'm doing this now because I'm getting prepared for a couple of builds. Yeah, let's do, let's go up to 60. There we go. Now we just seal it up. Make sure that's sealed. And now we begin to shake. Thank you for your doing a milkshake or you know one of those power drinks for you for you weightlifting guys out there and gals you know. and then of course it helps with the little ball bearing inside to get the most out of it not bad all right so let me continue on checking this and then we're going to prepare uh, a little bit of paint all right we're now going to begin painting. As you can see, I've got my airbrush humming away. I haven't turned on this one yet, but I did turn on the LED lights. And I'm going to turn on the waterfall. Turn on the fans. And we're going to do a, about a little, a little speed right there. That's too much. Now, we were hearing it how loud it was before when I didn't have the vent on. 
I finally have the vent on right now, as you can see the uh, tubing. It's going directly to my window. Very pleasant sound. No the vibrations, no nothing. It's like a pretty much a jet engine. Jesus Christ, what's up? <laughs> it pretty much was a, a, a jet engine. The only difference is of course is the this noise out of my out of my compressor. Unfortunately, that's, there's nothing I can do about that until I guess one day you get a new compressor. Now, I'm gonna pour a little bit on primer on my airbrush. It up so it don't bother me. I'm going to do a test blast to see how it works. I hate when this happens. There we go. So good, it picks up it picks up the particles. Now I've noticed now you probably noticed that the two side uh, um, pieces here uh, clear part, uh, clear, clear, uh, clear acrylic. Excuse me. I still have the protective film on it, and uh, I know it looks pretty without it. But I like to keep it clean, and, and I know that there may be a back blast of particles here, hitting here and there. But I decided to keep these on. Let me zoom in. Let's paint the uh, Star Wars Mecha Collide uh, Razor Crest from Star Wars The Mandalorian. So there's no backblast of the particles hitting my face because it's being collected by the uh, compressor, by the uh, well, I said compressor, uh, by the uh, spray booth waterfall. I'm concerned that this is a very, very uh, toxic and how can I say uh, strong uh, uh, primer from Modo. I'm, it, I'm not smelling it, uh, you know, it's not, uh, I'm not smelling the, uh, all the, you know, the fumes hitting my face. Regardless of the case, always wear a mask, just in case, because you never know. Alright, so my, my compressor, I've been also having issues with that, so hopefully I can get that taken care of. There we go. Now I remember in the video that AO uh, Mega did, um, usually um, some of the paint will stick onto it, but I noticed he was doing that with the with the spray can. I mentioned before that spray cans uh, react differently than an airbrush. I'm going to show you again. So I have this spray can, uh, Mr. White Surfacer. Uh, I have another part here that I can actually paint for a demonstration, so give me a moment. Okay, so I have one of my uh, Mecha Collide uh, ships, the carrier from Yamato. Put this to the side here. I'm going to... Now I'm going to do a quick blast. As you can see, how strong that was, the water collected it and then it actually brought down. I see a little bit stuck there. I think this is almost down for me. This 
is not a good paint to try, uh, primer to use. I think that's, uh, you know what, this thing is almost done. But this is an example right there. Yeah, um, we're done with that one. All right. Okay, so look what happened right there. Spray cans have a more direct, it's not a wide nozzle, it's, it's a focus nozzle. And as you can see, the paint collected there. Now, I remember he was doing this with, the, with, the, with his finger, and it did not stick to the glass because you have the water. Obviously, you want to do all this to collect what's there so it doesn't stay. But there's all the particles. Some particles uh, suck up here on the top. I'm going to use a, uh, a thinner, you know, take a towel or napkin, douse it with thinner, and then uh, clean it up. But everything is now all collected down below, and then it's going down to the reservoir where it just fell down. Uh, let me see if I can show you this. So there's where the water is collected. It goes there. There's the uh, leftover of the white paint and the uh, primer. And then later on, I'm gonna, once it finishes, I'm going to collect it and then put it and then put it away, you know, I say put it away, um, wipe it, clean it, dispose of it, so I can get ready to paint it again. Here's a close-up view of all the paint that has been collected here, as you can see. A little bit more of the spray painting than the airbrushing. So you got to be very careful if you if you want to use uh, spray cans, you can just be mindful that you're going to have to be cleaning up this a lot of times. And also, I think I miscalculated the amount of water that I've used. I may have put a little bit too much. So maybe I did one and one and maybe you want three one point three or one point four liters. So I'm going to probably keep it a simple one liter. That should be sufficient enough for this. Um, this is kind of like a mesh type uh, basket, so make sure you clean this up. Don't let it sit there. Uh, obviously, it'll be floating in the water, but once you pull it out, get it to the to the sink, begin cleaning it, replace the water, make sure it's patted down, and then refill it up so you can begin painting again. Ah. Okay, now it's nice and clean. I. Uh, Cleaned the filter, disposed of the water, cleaned up the the reservoir, um, made sure everything's clean as well. Luckily, I had this uh, the uh, you know one of my cutting boards, my old cutting boards here, to act as a you know to keep the water. There's spacing under there, so if you drop water under that, you're gonna have to clean it up. Be mindful of that, of course. Um, and of course, an AO Mecca mentioned this that when you handle the LED light, this thing is nice and hot. I mean, it's burning, really, really burning. Uh, so be mindful for that as well. Uh, it is a, it is a, you know, it's huge. It's it's amazingly big. I, I knew that I was going to get a new spray booth that was going to be big, and. I was so accustomed to my original super booth for a long time that I go, okay, nothing gets better than this, but I forgot that it does, of course. And getting this is a pleasant, pleasant surprise. It's nice to the eye. It's clean. It's it, the do the noise is not that loud as you could see right there. It's easy to tra to close and transport. Obviously, once I'm done, I'll just close it up and that's it because I'm not going to let it open, you know, be open all the time. But there's a, uh, you know, it, it has a lot of maintenance work that you have to work on, especially if you want to clean up the the water left over from a lot of painting. And I do a lot of painting, of course. Um, oh, and of course the battery pack on my uh, 
on this just finally gave out. But that that goes without saying. I mean that I mean I I, I can just buy myself one of those uh, phone charger uh, USB phone chargers and and or you know connectors for an outlet and just plug it in and I can you know can have it all day. It, that is actually one of the most powerful LED lights I got. I've had a few, but it was all battery powered and. You turn it on, and then after a few hours, they're done. So it's like, why bother? I have to put this guy on now. Is it worth getting? I'm not going to tell you you should not get it. You should get it only if you are a professional. And I can't believe I just said that about myself. If you're a beginner, get yourself, you know, a simple spray booth, not bad, you know, all that stuff, and fine. But, for those of you who have been in the business for a long time like me, who do not want a lot of noise, who do not want uh, spray uh, um, fumes going all over the place in your, in your room, if you want to use spray cans, which I highly recommend not to, but... It, it will work with spray cans, so as you can see, it collected it, but you're going to have to learn to clean it. If you want to keep it nice and pristine like you see right there, you're going to need to clean it all the time. I'm not going to say you shouldn't be cleaning it if you use uh, regular airbrush, uh, airbrushing techniques. Uh, always clean it. Keep it nice. Keep your workstation nice and clean, so that would look good. And the one thing I kind of like this is the fact that in my previous... Uh, uh, in my previous encounters of pa painting, normally I have parts that I've already finished painting nearby, and since sometimes in the old spray booth, the uh, the filter was always clogged up, and I would have to replace the filter usually after a good hour or so of painting. This one you don't have to worry about clogging up because all that particles is now being captured by the water it's being put into the reservoir so you can collect it and put it and then throw it away so you don't have particles flying in the air you don't have any back uh, back blasts you don't have any type of particles hitting out and coming back you know to something you know bouncing back to you as you're spray painting it works great with primer now if primer works great like that then clearly with paint it's even better because you're not going to have that problem as long as it's properly thinned and controlled. But if you guys want to get it, I'm putting a link down here below for uh, Robot Kai. Get it from them. Because they're the ones that are, are making, you know, are giving this to everybody. Uh, well, anybody who wants to purchase it. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to stick that there, but I'm going to put it right there. There you go. So, thank you. Robot Kai for uh, finally getting this after a long time. I hope you get more for other people who are interested. Now, as of as of this recording, they're they're out of stock, but pre-order it, put it on your waiting list. And for those of you who are interested, I would recommend getting this for you. And uh, hopefully, this will you know obviously make your your workflow a much better, cleaner environment than you were than you had before i'd like to thank you guys all for watching and stay tuned for more gundam models yet to come or i should say stay tuned for more tool time with strider prime yet to come you guys all have a great day